Hi, and welcome back to SDRTK. I've had a few questions about wireless lav mics, and in particular, affordable ones. So I thought I'd take a look at this one from Lee Reel. It's available for about 30 US dollars at the time of recording. So we're gonna do some audio tests, and I'll show you how to use this for vlogging and for streaming and voice calls on your PC. Let's check it out. And so in this video, first I'll go ahead and unbox the microphone for you. I'll briefly go over some of the specs, and then we'll get into the audio tests. First, we'll test it out here in the studio. Then we'll go into an untreated loft space, bedroom space, as well as outdoors. We'll test the mic both with and without its built-in DSP functions. Then I'll go ahead and set it up with some processing in the studio, and I'll show you how to use this either for streaming or for video calls. Go ahead and unbox this microphone. Seems like it's actually in a pretty sturdy box, so that's nice to see. Protect it on its way to you. And now once we get inside, I see there's an instruction manual. And uh, yeah, it appears to have um, some information about how to set the microphone up, a few of the settings. So that's good. We'll take a look at that. And we have the microphone itself. Looks like the mic and clip uh, here appears to be kind of all in one. So it's not detachable. Uh, we can take the windscreen off. So uh, that's good. Maybe that can be replaced or we could use maybe a dead cat with it if we wanted. It's all plastic. Um, you know, it's not the smallest, but I think it'll do the job. Then we have the receiver for the iPhone itself. As you can see, it has a lightning connector on it. And then we get a box with a few other things here. So we'll just open that up. You can see already a cable peeking through. And uh, yeah, it's got a USB, uh, USB charging cable that comes with it. And uh, okay, and that looks like an in-ear monitor. So yeah, USB, uh, USB charging cable and uh, an in-ear monitor. So I guess if you wanted to use this for uh, like for hands-free calls or something like that, you could do that as well. Uh, so yeah, it um, has a short cord, so that must just plug right into the lav mic. So let's go ahead and test this out. Now that I've unboxed the mic, let's take a quick look at the technical specs. This is of course a wireless microphone. It operates on 2.4 gigahertz band. It has a frequency response rating of 20 to 20,000 Hertz omnidirectional pattern and that means it'll pick up from all directions that's pretty common for a lavalier microphone so it won't matter if you turn your head or move around too much it should pick everything up sensitivity is rated at negative 30 db with a signal to noise ratio of 65 db so not very high here but i mean keeping in mind the price of this microphone i think that's reasonable the microphone also has one button on it it is of course for powering it off and on but also it selects the modes and this has three built-in noise reduction modes or DSP modes. So increasingly more and more noise reduction. It also has a reverb mode that you can turn off and on. Latency is rated at less than 20 milliseconds. So it's a very, very fast response time. And battery life is estimated to be between four and six hours. And I can tell you in my testing, I was able to get about five hours of battery life. So it's really good again for a wireless mic to have that kind of, uh, that kind of staying power. Uh, unfortunately, you can't change batteries in this, so you have to recharge it. But I found I was able to charge it up pretty quick to get it running again. Uh, so, I mean, if for regular use, for, for typical vlogging applications and that, I think you got plenty of battery life here. And now you're listening to me on the Lee Real wireless mic. I have it paired up with my iPhone. It was really easy to do. All I had to do was turn the microphone on and then plug the receiver into the phone. Paired up right away, no issues. Now I could be getting the sound in a couple of ways here. I could record the audio into my iPhone and then sync it up in post. But what I've actually done here is I've used an app on the phone called Epoch Cam that allows me to use the phone as a webcam on my PC. So I have that actually open in OBS Studio. I'm using my regular camera here, but I'm capturing the audio from the microphone through Epoch Cam into the uh, into the OBS. So. This is a great way to have a wireless mic now that I can use with OBS. I can also use this with uh, Zoom or any other calling app. I could, of course, use the phone as the camera as well. And so if you want to just use your phone with uh, this wireless mic as a camera in OBS Studio, you can do that with Epoch Cam. But this video is about the microphone, so I won't get into that too much. Suffice to say, here we go with the uh, unprocessed audio. I have no processing applied. I'm, of course, in my studio space here, so it's a well-treated room. There's still a little bit of sound from my PC in here, but basically it's pretty quiet. And this is what the microphone sounds like without any of the built-in noise reduction. Now I'll go ahead and switch it over to level one noise reduction. Now I've switched the mic over to noise reduction level one. And to my monitoring my ears, it, I, I'm not hearing a whole lot of background noise. It actually seems to have gotten rid of most of it in my studio here with uh, this setting. 
we'll see if that's any different in the other environments I tested in. But in the studio, level one seems to have really uh, dropped it right down. I will switch over next to level two so we can hear what that sounds like. Now I switched over to level two noise reduction. And from what I can hear in my monitoring, it sounds pretty quiet. And again, the studio doesn't have a lot of noise. It has treated walls and it does have a bit of computer noise. But um, absolutely, I mean, no noise in the background from what I can hear at level two. This is very usable. We'll get into a process demonstration. I'll add in a little bit of uh, EQ and compression after just to uh, let you hear what this mic could sound like for uh, for your streams in a studio application or in post-processing. But uh, this is level two. Again, uh, no processing other than the noise reduction that's built into the microphone. And now I've set the microphone onto its level three noise reduction. and. Again, it's hard to hear in the monitoring when you're speaking, but from what I can tell here, I'm getting, it sounds a little robotic, which is normal for noise reduction. Uh, not really necessary here in the studio. Really, I found either level one or level two was more than enough for this application, but here's what level three sounds like in the studio. Now we'll uh, take this out into a loft space with uh, big open ceilings and that and uh, see what it sounds like there. Okay, and now I'm sitting in an open loft space in my house here. So there's high ceilings. Uh, there's a lot of ceramic tile on the floor, hardwoods in here. And uh, so this is one of the most echoey spaces that I have that I can test this for, for all of you in the, in the house here. So as you can hear, there is some echo, I'm sure, in the background. I can, I can just hear it sitting here as I speak. But uh, anyways, this is the microphone without any of the onboard noise reduction. So I have it sitting here on my pocket. So it's like, you know, about 10, 12 inches away from my mouth. And this is what the sound is like. I'll go ahead and switch it over to level one noise reduction so you can hear what that sounds like. Okay, and now I switched over to the level one noise reduction and this is how my uh, voice sounds. Everything else is the same, of course. So that'll give you an idea of what kind of difference this will make in an echoey environment. Not necessarily really a noisy environment. I don't have any loud noise going on in the space, but certainly there is a lot of background echo. So we'll see how it sounds. And now I switched over to level two on the noise reduction. And again, the space has the echo in here. You can see if it makes any difference. So level two, this is the built-in level two noise reduction. And finally, I switched over to the level three noise reduction. And so this is the maximum amount of noise reduction or processing that this lav mic will built in, that will do with its built-in function. So hopefully this gives you an idea of the, the three different levels of noise reduction, as well as no noise reduction at all in a very echoey space, kind of a typical indoor environment with, a, uh, with, with high ceilings and hard surfaces. Okay, and now I've moved into just a regular bedroom. So this is an untreated space. I just wanted to give you an idea of the kind of tone. There's a little bit of echo in this room. It's of course not bad because there's the bed in here, of course, as well as uh, I've got a, a small sofa in here. And so this is the sound again without any noise reduction applied on the microphone. Now I'll go ahead and I'll switch it over to the level one noise reduction. And now I've set the microphone to level one noise reduction. Again, that bedroom space here. So kind of a typical untreated room that you might be using this in. So uh, hopefully this gives you an idea of level one. Now we'll switch over to level two. Okay, and now I'm on level two noise reduction. Again, a normal bedroom space to give you an idea of what the sound will be like. Do you hear a difference between level two and level one? Let me know in the comments. All right, and finally I've switched on to level three, the maximum amount of noise reduction that this microphone will apply. Again, that bedroom space, untreated, and this will give you an idea of what the sound is like. And now I moved to kind of an outdoor space just to give you an idea of what the sound would be like. Uh, there's birds chirping in the background, uh, other cars driving by, a few things going on. But this is the sound without any noise reduction. I'll go ahead and switch it over to level one. Okay, and now this is level one on the noise reduction, and so Hopefully it gives you an idea of what the sound is like uh, with just a little bit of noise reduction applied from this microphone. Now uh, we'll go ahead and switch over to level two. And this is level two on the noise reduction, so a little increased noise reduction here. This is what the sound is like. And finally here on level three, the maximum amount of noise reduction you can get with this lav mic. Outside, birds chirping, a little light breeze here, and this is what the sound is like. And now I'm back in the studio and I've added up plug-in processing to this mic. So you can probably hear it sounds quite a bit different than before. And the idea was to just do something very simple. I didn't want to create a very complex processing chain, but I wanted to give you an idea of what you could do with this. And this can be applied in post or it can be applied live real time if you want to stream using OBS. And so let me uh, just switch over here. Uh, this is uh, kind of a shot here of what's going on. 
I've really used two main plugins here. I've used Isotopes D Reverb and Isotopes Neutron 3. And so for D Reverb, because this is an omnidirectional microphone, you know, even though we're in a room here that has treatment, there is going to be some reverberance, some reflection, and you can see that it is cleaning that up. It's taking some of that away. Then uh, over in Neutron 3, I've added an equalizer and a compressor. And again, you could use whatever EQ or compressor you like, even the built-in ones in OBS or the built-in ones in, in Premiere or whatever editing program you're using. And all I've done is added a little bit of boost in the low end here just to build up a little body. I've, uh, I've a slight cut in the middle just to control some of the boxiness. There isn't much with this mic. And then kind of back up in the, in the presence area, just kind of pretty flat there. A little minor cut up high to control some sibilance. And then uh, some presence happening just above in the higher frequencies. And again, the idea is just to give the microphone some body but maintain clarity. And in terms of the compressor, I set the threshold up at about negative uh, 15 dB. And it's, you can see just very few transients are coming above that threshold. And the idea here is that, again, I don't want to make this sound overly compressed. I want it to be fairly natural. But uh, with uh, controlling some of the highest transients, this microphone doesn't have a huge dynamic range that it's going to you know, give you wide, wide transient bursts with consonants. So uh, a little bit of processing goes a long way here. And really, again, I wanted to just give you an idea of how you could just apply some basic EQ and compression to this mic to, uh, to thicken up the body, to maybe uh, turn it into a little more uh, of the, the sound you might like to have as if you were using, you know, maybe a large diaphragm condenser microphone or, or a, a dynamic broadcast microphone. Certainly, you can get that sort of fuller, thicker sound with a little bit of processing from this mic. And I have to say, for, you know, for in the price range, again, 30 US dollars at the time of recording, uh, pretty impressed with the, with the sound from this mic that I was able to get here for processing. And again, you can use this for streaming or you can apply it in post. So if you're out vlogging, like in my previous unprocessed examples, you know, you're outside or in a bedroom space, when you go to do your video editing, you can just apply this processing and you'll get that, you know, that level of audio quality. Again, reverberation may, you know, may or may not be there depending on the space you're talking in, but certainly you can thicken up the sound. And now I switch back to noise reduction level two without any additional processing. And really what I'd like to do is a couple of microphone comparisons. And so I'll use the level two because it is built into this microphone, but I won't do any other processing on any of these comparisons. And so we'll start out here again on the Lee Reel wireless mic. This is the uh, sound with noise reduction level two in my studio space. Now I'll go ahead and switch over to another inexpensive lav mic. This is a wired one. It's the Boya BYM1. It'll plug directly into your iPhone or into your audio interface. So you can use it for vlogging. You can use it for streaming, recording. And uh, let's see how it compares. Again, similar price range to the uh, Lee Reel wireless, but a wired mic. And now you're hearing me on the Boya BYM1. This again is about a 30 US dollar wired microphone. So I've got it mounted up in the same spot here. So again, about eight to 10 inches away from my mouth. This of course I have plugged directly into my Focusrite Scarlett 8i6, but I haven't applied any processing. This is uh, the sound directly out of the uh, BYM1. And just so you can compare a microphone in the same price point, this of course doesn't have the wireless connectivity. You can plug it into the phone, but you have to route the cable comes with a, almost a 20 foot long cable. So there's no, no worry about as far as distance, but wireless is certainly uh, an advantage perhaps that the Lee Reel has over this microphone. Uh, now we'll uh, go ahead and I'll switch back to the Lee Reel before we test another mic. And I've put the Lee Reel wireless mic back on just so you can hear it in between. We'll do one more mic comparison. This time it's gonna be the Deity V-Lab. So that's a little more expensive microphone, usually around 60, 70 US dollars. So about double the price. Again, it's a wired microphone. You have to plug this into your iPhone or interface. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, let's uh, see what the difference is. And now you're hearing me on the Deity V-Lab. This microphone's about double the price of the Lee Real wireless mic. Now the Deity is a wired mic again, has a 3.5 millimeter jack. So you can use it with any phone that has that jack as well as portable audio recorders. But you just need to be aware that you're losing that wireless function here. Now for double the price, you're getting better sound. Uh, the the VLAV uh, certainly I think has a little thicker sound from my monitoring, but again it's really difficult to tell um, when you're when you're speaking at the same time. The Lee Reel might have a little advantage in terms of its built-in noise reduction, um, although certainly again in post-processing we can apply those sorts of filters as well. 
But uh, just as they are out of the box, uh, comparing the two microphones, do you prefer this uh, Deity V Lav or do you prefer the uh, Lee Real Wireless Mic? Again, this one being double the price. Let's uh, let's go back now to the Lee Real. And now again, you're hearing me through the Lee Real Wireless Microphone with noise reduction level two added in. And so the comparison to the Deity V Lav, the Boya BYM1. Did you hear a big difference? Is there a real advantage of one over the other? I wanted to give you an idea of microphones again in a similar price range. Of course, we can go up in price and get a lot more expensive microphones, but really in this price range, I think uh, the Lee Reel to my ears and monitoring uh, compared reasonably well. And so now that we've had a few tests and comparisons, I'll give you my final thoughts. I think this microphone is very usable in the price range. The nice thing, of course, is that you can take it with you and record wherever you are. You'll definitely get better sound with the microphone up close to you versus using the built-in mic on your phone. So I think that's a big plus here. The fact that I can uh, use it as a PC mic as well with my hack with Epoch Cam also I think makes it that much more usable and kind of overcomes some of the some of the issues with a microphone that's dedicated to one particular phone only. So uh, in terms of that, I think, again, the sound was reasonable. To my ears, pretty fair comparison with other microphones in the price range. Uh, you know, of course you can spend a, a lot more, but really for what we are here, I think the sound, uh, the sound worked very well. Certainly processing was able to achieve what I think is very usable uh, stream and recording audio. And uh, certainly if you want to apply that in post with any vlog footage, uh, you, could, you could get the sound I think that you want. Again, without going into a very expensive wireless setup. And so would I recommend this microphone? Well, it depends. If you're looking for an inexpensive solution for a wireless mic for your iPhone, and you want to have the ability to maybe take it with you and even use it occasionally for streaming or recording, I think, yeah, I absolutely. I mean, the price is, is good and the ability to get sound out of it, I think is very good with a little bit of processing. Absolutely. If you're looking for a high-end wireless solution, then no. Save your money, buy something more expensive. You'll be able to get a cleaner, crisper sound, a smaller mic that's perhaps a little more easily hidden. Uh, so it just, again, depends on your use case. And if you're into audio and video gear, interested in streaming or recording, check out one of the other videos on the screen. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.